On the driver's side back seat, you're gonna find a strap like this here. Hopefully yours has it. Go ahead and grab that. You wanna pull up on the seat and lift up and pull the back seat cushion up and forward. Locate this patch of carpet that looks to be cut out. Grab a corner of it, lift that up, and pull it aside. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, go ahead and remove the four screws holding this panel in place. Go ahead and set the four screws aside. We're gonna use a plastic trim tool remover to go ahead and get underneath this panel. Lift this up. Underneath this panel, I wanna go ahead and pay attention to the two electrical connectors that are here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this gray tab, press that in, pop that off. I wanna go ahead and remove this connector right here as well. I'm pressing down this little tab right inside here, trying to separate the connector like so. I'm gonna go ahead and move this rubber O-ring off of this panel. This is gonna allow us to have more flexibility and room to work underneath here. Go ahead and pop this little tab off here. Next, go ahead and start the vehicle. That way there we can drain out the fuel pressure and the fuel from those lines. Let the engine run until it stalls out. Okay, the vehicle just shut down. We're gonna give it a couple more cranks for good measure. We wanna go ahead and remove this fuel sending unit from the tank itself. However, this tube here is in our way, we can't move it. So we wanna go ahead and raise the vehicle, see if we can disconnect this hose from underneath the vehicle and allow us to move this out of the way. Then we'll go ahead and remove that fuel pump. Now underneath the vehicle, this plastic tube is the one that is up in our way above the fuel sending unit. So it comes over into a T. So we're gonna first disconnect this vapor line right here by pushing up on these little tabs. Pop this clip up. And if you have to, you can use a little pick, but ours happen to come up nice and easy. I'm gonna go ahead and separate that hose like so. Just pull it apart, and that'll allow that to be free. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try and get some flexibility out of this connector here. Our particular one has a little zip tie on it. Go ahead and remove that zip tie. We'll be able to replace that after. I want to go ahead and remove this unit off of the canister here. And this plastic vent tube goes up into a retainer. We're just going to use a screwdriver or you can try and use your finger. We want to go ahead and release that vent line from that little plastic retainer there. Once it's free, we should have a little bit more flexibility here. Inside this connector, there's a tab on each side here. I just use two picks. Go inside and open up the retainers. And go ahead and work that off like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fuel pressure line here. We're gonna disconnect this blue clip by pushing up on the bottom. There's two little tabs. Push up on that. And lift up. Now we did depressurize the system. There still might be some fuel pressure in here. So two things, make sure you work in a well-ventilated area. Number two, safety glasses. And we do have some towels on here to catch any fuel that dribbles out. So now that is down, or that clip is up, we're gonna go ahead and wiggle this off slowly. And you can see a little bit of fuel dribbling out. Pretty safe to at least slide this paper towel back. Now let's go ahead and remove that. 
Now we have a lock ring on the top. We're going to use a brass only punch. Do not use a steel punch or a screwdriver. We have raw fuel here. We can only imagine what a spark and raw fuel will do. So, I want to go ahead and turn this uh, counterclockwise. Now that we have the lock ring loose, we go ahead and pull that up. Remove that from the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and take that fuel line and I'm just going to loosely zip tie it to this other vapor line here just to keep it out of our way. We're not going to snug it down, just want it back. We want to make sure that it still has flexibility here. Now this unit here, go ahead, pop that loose. You want to make sure that this is clean. So we previously cleaned it with our, our blow gun to get all the debris off of that. We don't want to have junk falling into the tank. Go ahead and pull up on this unit here. You can see down inside the tank, there is our fuel pump unit. Inside the tank, there are lock tabs. There's one right here, one right here, and there's one right on the opposite side of it. I'm gonna reach down there, I'm gonna squeeze those tabs inward together, and then I'm gonna pull that fuel pump up out of the vehicle. Now we have our catch can inside the vehicle. This is gonna be dripping gasoline. I'm going to go ahead and pop our float arm off right here and just kind of snap this out. Try using our plastic trim tool remover. Pop that out. That arm should slide right out of the side of the unit. Now if you have a lot of gas in the tank, when you open up the original tank itself and you pull that lid off you can put a pump down inside and take that fuel out now with that out you can see that the float is missing I do have to reach down inside the tank grab that float and that's what it looks like we'll go ahead and remove the unit from the vehicle set that aside I want to get back in here and we're just gonna blot this area we don't want to wipe we don't want to pull anything into that fuel tank. Then there's a green O-ring seal right there. I just use a small pick, grab on that. I'm going to replace that O-ring, that is your seal. Pull it up and go ahead and discard that. Go ahead and take your new O-ring, set that down into place. And now what we're going to do is lower the float down inside. I want to go ahead and line up our rod on the side here. Line that up and we're just going to gently push that on. And you'll hear it click. You don't want to force it. You don't want to bend the rod. Drop our unit down inside here. Put it down. You can hear it click into place and give that fuel pump a tug. It'll lock it in. Now we'll go ahead and position our top unit here. Make sure our O-ring is still in place properly. Drop our block ring down into place. All right, now we have that tank set in on that O-ring. Get our lock ring lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and use our brass punch again and we're gonna lock up that lock ring. At this point here, we can go ahead and remove the fuel line. I'm gonna go ahead and snip my retainer here, my temporary retainer, line that up. I'm gonna push that on and then press our lock tab down. Now let's go ahead and reconnect our connectors here. Once we 
have that all set, go ahead and take your rubber boot retainer here, slide that back through. Just work that through a little bit at a time. You can actually pop it all the way through if you want and then just feed it back through the other side. Here we go. Go ahead and line up your cover. We'll install our four Phillips head screws. Let's go ahead and snug these down. Fold on your carpet patch. Grab our seat, pull that up, fold that into place. Now underneath the vehicle, we want to go ahead and connect our vent line here, line that up. All right, get that to pop on. Now we're going to replace the zip tie that we had. Snip off the excess. Now on the back portion we had our hose, we've popped that back into the plastic retainer clip. Now we have this connector here. I wanna go ahead and reconnect this here. Simply line that up, work that on. You'll hear that click into place and then press our lock tab down. Now I wanna go ahead and put the key in, turn the key to the on position. We're gonna do that twice. What that's doing is the fuel pump is priming the fuel system. Let's go ahead and try and start it. 